Hi everybody, in this video I want to take a deep look into class components in React. So the first thing I want to show you is how we can actually create a class component. And at the moment, the React app that I'm going to use as the basis for this tutorial looks very simple. We have a couple of lines of HTML code over here. We have head tags with a title React app, and we have body tags with a div that has the ID root. And within the index.js file, uh, that I've prepared, I only have two imports. I'm importing React and React DOM. So let's go ahead and create a class and we're gonna call it class component. And whenever we create a class component, we always need to make sure that it inherits from React component. So we're gonna write extends and then react.component. Within curly brackets, we can then add a render method and within curly brackets again, we can add a return statement. Return, if I can spell return, there we go. And over here, we're simply going to return some very simple HTML code. Specifically, I wanna return a header that simply says, hello, my name is Max, exclamation mark. So now we've created the very first class component and you should always remember that class components need three elements. They need to extend React component, they need to have a render method, and they need to return some sort of HTML code. But this class component that we've created will not do anything within our browser yet because we haven't called it yet, we haven't rendered it yet. So to render a class component, what we can do is we can first um, create the place where we want to render the class component and we want to render it in between these div tags. So just remember that we have these div tags and they have the ID root. So to do that, we can create a constant. We're gonna call it root and we're gonna set it equal to react dom and then we're going to create root and within brackets, we're gonna write document dot get element by ID and within brackets we're going to put in the name or the ID of the element which is root and we're going to close this off with a semicolon and at the very end we still need to write root.render and within brackets we need to call the class component so we're going to write class component and close this off again and now we can open this up in our browser so to run this React app within the browser, what we need to do is we need to go to the file tree, right click on the file within which we have our React app. And I'm then going to open the integrated terminal. And within the integrated terminal, I'm simply going to write npm start. Now, once we wait a couple of seconds, the browser window should open up. Let me drag it down from my second screen. And yeah, over here you can see it says, hello, my name is Max. Now, if I go ahead and um, let me open it again here. If I right click on it, then click on the inspector, you will see that the H1 tags with the text, hello, my name is Max, have indeed landed between the div tags that have the ID root, which is the result of this render statement over here. The next thing that I want to show you is how we can add a constructor to our class component. Constructors are very helpful because they allow us to give our component some initial values. To add a constructor, all we do is we need to write constructor, followed by a pair of brackets and curly brackets. Within a constructor, we can now add whatever we want. Um, usually we start off by writing super because that allows us to access the functions within the parent class. So what super does, it quite simply executes the uh, constructor within the parent class. And the parent class in this case is the React component because our class is uh, inheriting from React component. So this gives us access to whatever is in React component. And that allows us to do some pretty cool things. One thing is to add some properties to our component. We usually store properties within the object state. 
So we're going to write this dot state and we're going to set that equal to a pair of curly brackets and within curly brackets we can then write something like first underscore name colon and then pass in some random first name which could be Peter. So this property is now stored in the constructor and let's say we would like to then use it within the h1 tags over here. So how do we refer to this property from our HTML tags over here? That's quite simple. We simply need to add a pair of curly braces. And within curly braces, we can then write this dot state dot first underscore name. And you'll see that if I open this up in the browser window, so let me see if I have it open. Yes, I do you'll see that at the moment it doesn't say anything, probably because I made a mistake. Oh yeah, I forgot to write first correctly. So first, there we go. And now you'll see that it gives us the first name, Peter, that we um, entered into the property. And the interesting thing is that you can actually add more than one property. So at the moment we have a first name, but if we add a comma, and then add a last name, for example. Let's give it the last name, Parker. Parker. We can refer to this last name by simply copying and pasting what we wrote earlier. But instead of writing first name twice, we now reference the last name. So if I now go ahead and open the browser window again, it should say Peter Parker, and that is exactly what it does. So up to this point, we've created the class component, we have rendered the class component and shown it within our browser, and we have also gone ahead and created a constructor that has some property values. The next thing that I want to show you is that we can also pass in property values through the call to the class component over here. So let's go ahead and remove the constructor, and I'm going to simplify this by simply writing uh, hello, my name is, um, and then get rid of the last pair of curly brackets. And now I want to go ahead and pass in some data, and I do that by writing the property name first. So I'm going to write first underscore name, and I'm going to set this equal to a different name, let's say David, and to then access this data that I'm passing in over here, within the class component, I need to write this and then props and then the name of the property, which is still first name. If I go ahead and save this now, you'll see that within the browser, the name has changed to David because now we are not using the constructor anymore. We are instead passing some data in through this call down here. The last thing that I want to show you is how we can access components that are in different files. So at the moment, the class component is within our index.js file. But let's go ahead and create a new file within the source folder over here. So new file, and we're going to call it component.js. And we're going to copy over the class component that we just created a couple of moments ago, and we're going to pass it right in here. So the question now becomes, how can we access the class component that is now in the components.js file? To do that, we need to make sure that the components.js file has all the necessary imports. So we're going to copy over the import React from React. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to export this class component. And to do that, we can simply write export, then default and then class component. And once we've done that, we should have access to this component from the index.js file. So over here, to have access to the component, we still need to make sure we import it. So we're going to write import, and we're then going to write the name of the component we're importing, which is class component. And then we need to make sure we specify from where we're importing it, which is from and then dot slash component 
app.js. And if I now go ahead and save this, you'll see that the browser window still shows me the same result that I had earlier, which means that even after refreshing, all of this works. And to just prove to you that we still have access to this class component, I can go ahead and change the first name to, let's say, Steven. And you'll see that within the browser window, it will now say Steven. So we still have access to the class component, even though it is now in a different file. All right, so that's gonna be it for this tutorial. See you guys in the next one.